Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. Since the original iPhone's launch 13 years ago, a lot of people have been waiting for Apple's next big product category. Since then, we've had the iPad, Apple Watch, and the EarPods. These have all sold well, but I think Apple's next venture into augmented reality might be more interesting. Augmented reality is a technology whose goal it is to augment or enhance one's physical environment by adding digital elements. We explored augmented and virtual reality and their history in a previous video, so you can check that out to learn a bit of background. This new industry has started maturing, and Apple stepping in with a pair of augmented reality glasses may be a game changer. The details of these glasses were recently leaked, so what can Apple bring to the space? Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we dive in. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. From previous patent filings, we know that Apple has been exploring virtual and augmented reality technologies for more than 10 years. The company has established a secret research unit comprising of hundreds of employees, including members from companies such as Microsoft, Lytro, Magic Leap, Oculus, and organizations such as NASA and Virginia Tech. They've also acquired a bunch of companies in the AR and VR space. From Google Glass and Snapchat Spectacles to HoloLens, Magic Leap, and Facebook's upcoming AR glasses, many have tried and are trying to make this technology work, and the landscape could suddenly get very crowded very fast. But so far, it's mostly been in vain. There hasn't been any mainstream success beyond the dedicated tech community, and Apple may change that. If there's one thing that Apple is good at, it's making technology simple for the masses. In the 80s, they changed personal computing by popularizing or stealing, depending on how you look at it, Xerox's graphical user interface. It changed computers from lines of text that were often confusing, frustrating, and error-prone into a graphical interface that everyone could understand. In 2001, they made portable music less of a chore to navigate. And of course, in 2007, Apple made smartphones accessible. They took the clunkiness out of the user interface. Before the iPhone, it was the buttons of a Blackberry or the frustrating touchscreen of an LG Prada. Capacitive multi-touch changed the game. All of this is to say, having simplicity at the core has proved to be a successful strategy for Apple, and a new product category like augmented reality is the perfect arena to push this strategy further. Leaker John Prosser says that these new glasses will be called Apple Glass. He mentions that the product will look similar to Ray-Bans or the glasses that Tim Cook wears. He describes them as unintimidating, a factor that I think will be very important. The price is said to be $4.99, which is surprising for Apple. For instance, Microsoft's HoloLens 2 has a price tag of $3,500. I've got another app here called Vuforia View. Now, it's a little big, so let me just use two hands here to make it smaller, and then rotate it so you can see. There we go. And then let me put it down here in your space shell, maybe make it a bit smaller. Yeah, that's nice. All right, now let's switch gears and talk about a different kind of application. I've got a browser over there, but it's kind of far away, and I don't really want to walk over there, so let me just call it over with my voice. Follow me. All right, so let me just open up that Start menu here, and then place the app and then launch it. I don't really want it following me around though while I'm showing you all this cool stuff, so let me just put it over here, and then we'll get back to it later. But much of that cost comes from all of the electronics needed to run the AR experience being built into the headset itself. On the other hand, Apple glasses are said to be run from the iPhone, much like the first generation Apple Watch, but we'll get to this later. Each lens is said to have a resolution of 8K, which puts it above most TVs. The release date for the glasses is said to be around 2022. According to the leaks, there's going to be no cameras on the glasses for privacy reasons. In the context of wearing glasses, having a camera pointed at you when someone is looking at you will be off-putting to many. And this problem was one of the main reasons why Google Glass failed. So if there's no camera, the question has to be asked, how will Apple Glass be able to see the environment to make all of the AR happen? Well, that's going to be done with a technology called LiDAR. 
LiDAR stands for Laser Imaging Detection and Ranging. It uses lasers to scan an environment and visualize distance and the shape of objects. It's similar to how bats use sound waves to quote, see their surroundings. LiDAR sensors are also used in self-driving cars. Apple already uses this technology in their latest iPad Pro. In the iPad Pro, the LiDAR scanner is already good enough to create a detailed mesh of its surroundings. It can recognize furniture, people, and more. The iPad Pro and the next iPhone could end up acting like a development kit for the glasses sensors. Analyst Ming-Chi Ku expects the AR glasses to be marketed as an iPhone accessory. And as mentioned, the computation, processing, networking, and positioning data will all be offloaded to the iPhone. The iPhone already has AR and computer vision computation chips built right in. So it seems like Apple designed these phones with the glasses in mind. Offloading all of the processing to the iPhone will allow the glasses to remain slim and lightweight According to a Bloomberg report, there's a new Apple patent that allows the streaming of information from your phone to your face. Specifically, the glasses, quote, are expected to synchronize with a wearer's iPhone to display things such as text, emails, maps, and games over the user's field of vision, end quote. Apple also has plans for third-party apps and is considering a dedicated app store. You could easily imagine navigation software or the enabling of home entertainment on a rescalable virtual TV. According to another patent, the system will be capable of identifying vision problems and automatically adjust the refraction of the displays and lenses to help a user see. This eliminates the need to wear prescription lenses beneath the augmented reality device. Bloomberg has also said that the glasses will run on ROS, or Reality Operating System. ROS is said to be based on iOS. There's already code in iOS 13 indicating a stereoscopic software called Starboard. This takes a bit of its name from the springboard, which is what the iPhone's home screen interface is called. iOS 14 is said to have support for a handheld controller remote. There are displays in both lenses and the user interface can be controlled by performing gestures on the frames or by using your hands in front of them. Augmented reality apps and games have been available since iOS 11, thanks to ARKit. Now there's a huge range of apps and games blending digital objects with the real world. ARKit has demonstrated that Apple already has all of the tech to do this today, and these software releases may have been in preparation for the glasses this whole time. Since the launch of this new product category and platform is still a while away, the details could be subject to change. That being said, the information and leaks are very interesting. As someone who's happy to see consumer tech progress, I'd love to see how Apple goes about tackling the AR problem. Their ethos of simplicity and attention to detail when it comes to user experience could go a long way in pushing augmented reality into the mainstream. So what do you guys think about all of this? Not so much from the point of view as Apple as a brand, but the bigger picture of augmented reality and where it's heading. Let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in more background and history behind augmented reality and virtual reality, I'll leave a link for the previous episode on the topic below. It's pretty interesting, and I'm sure you'll learn something. Up next, I'm thinking of doing a video on the history of cold fusion and who I am as a person. Sort of like those draw my life videos that YouTubers were doing a few years back, but of course without the drawing. I'm still thinking about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy that video and want to see more on science, technology, history or business, feel free to subscribe to this channel. So my name is Dagogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Cheers guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.